Hi, I'm Pete Lazzarato um, with Charter Communications. So we're the second largest MSO. My job with Charter is to, was to implement DCIM, which started about two years ago. I was happy to come up here and talk to you guys about um, how awesome it's been working with Enlight. Uh, we have currently purchased four modules. Um, one of them, uh, Hal mentioned, which is NEO, uh, which is the actual real-time power management for your data center or lab, what have you. So I manage the lab using uh, the software, and it's partially an asset uh, tracking, um, but in power monitoring tool. So, and it's already shown a couple of the reports to slide back. It showed you some of the reports that can be pulled up. I pull these reports up and I show my GVP um, hey, this is what we're looking at. So it's not a pie in the sky number. It's a real actual diagram that I can put on a PowerPoint or that I could show him on, on my laptop. So um, it's, been, it's been awesome uh, to, to see that live. My name is Hal Nyseth from CBRE. Uh, I am a facilities manager for the engineering operations area as a managed service uh, provider for a couple of organizations. Uh, they want to minimize the overall footprint of the strategic uh, locations. And then they also want to be able to better manage the power to save money as uh, a representative for CBRE. Um, it's all about facilities and infrastructure and efficiencies there as well. Uh, so we're looking to minimize the, the physicalness of the data centers push more things to the cloud. Um, and then we also want to take into consideration when we're trying to move this down strategically is many of these back-end partners that you might uh, discover endpoints with on the NEO side uh, for real-time power management and building facility systems, uh, they often tag along a third-party vendor that you might need to interface with to put the presentation of the, the GUI and the data out there. Uh, Enlight does this wonderfully on a GUI interface, provides a lot of the options right out of the box. So we're trying to minimize the additional vendors, the third-party vendors that we need to have come in, do the work, uh, and then have to contract with to be able to present that out. So companies that you might know of, uh, heard of, Setpoint, Johnson Controls, um, just to name a couple, um, offer services, professional services, to do that at a cost. Well, if you put in Enlight and Neo, you can take away some of that cost by doing that directly through their uh, interface. So hopefully we can reduce contracts and increase the earnings there. So we manage assets in racks all the way down to the power paths within the Neo tool. Uh, so we know the active power within a rack. So it, it helps us as a planning tool as well um, and has caused negative impact uh, because we've lost a few white space planning people to that uh, result, but it also improves it because it's at the touch of your fingertips. It's all right there. You can strip off the layers, you can move it down to a room, you can click on a rack, you can see absolutely where your assets are, what use spaces you have left. You can turn the rack around, find out what, how many power strips you have in the back, um, allocate how much power you have, tie it into your EPMS system on the NEO side, feed it the real-time power, and you've got a single pane of glass, and that's really the uh, cat's meow that we were looking for. One of the struggles we've had is being able to make some of the connections for the real-time power on the back end. The EPMS systems, the BMS systems can be a bear to try to connect with. Uh, many of those are set on a private network versus your own company network. You might have firewalls to jump through ports uh, that can cripple that. Uh, if you don't have the right people in place to make those connections and understand the topology or the design, uh, it could be a struggle when you start. But once you have that as a well-oiled machine running uh, and your contacts down to who to interface with, it helps out a ton. I'm Angie Peffinger and I'm a portfolio area leader for Cerner. We're a healthcare IT company. Um, we do, we have managed services. We do a lot of remote hosting for many of the hospitals, um, not just in the US, but across the globe. Um, we have the same problems that all of y'all have inside your infrastructure. Um, and 
As a portfolio area leader, I actually own all of our tech refresh and our tech currency. So I cause a lot of problems inside the data center with disparate space and constant upgrades. Um, so I, I literally found um, Enlight and DSIM by Googling, well, like we can't be the only um, company that has these problems, and DSIM kept coming up in the searches. Um, currently, we're projecting to defer two data center builds, which is huge for our company, for our shareholders. Um, and we're doing that with Enlight, and um, it's been a great partnership. We have, um, we started with the 10 data centers that are in the Kansas City area where our, w, where our headquarters are. Um, and then we, I'm certain we'll implement it globally um, once, once we get that all stood up and worked out. My sales team got me hooked up with another um, client of Enlight, and he was able to help us find the best, easiest way to connect our facilities ALC system into the NEO software that you spoke a lot of. Before we purchase a server or an asset, we know that we have space and power in the data center. We know where it's gonna go. Um, my joke is, is that we have taken Christmas away from the asset management team. We now know what's supposed to show up on the dock. It's not just a surprise when the pallet shows up. Um, they know exactly where to go, you know, provide that with the provisioning team. The provisioning team will know where to put it in the data center. I track it from a, a tech currency and a tech hardware perspective all the way through its life cycle. I know when it's deployed. I know when it's retired. I know um, when I retire a platform, how much of a data center will be freed up for that, right? And I can also use the Enlight software to do what if scenarios. So when I make power adjustments on a platform like our VMware platform, um, we know how it'll impact our data centers. And it's critical because we're bringing these servers in that are taking up so much more power than ever. And we need to be able to now figure out, you know, how what is the next level for our data center design, right? Instead of just a rack of network and a rack of server, or a row of servers and a row of storage, we're having to kind of divide it up. And um, we have the ability to do that. So, and that's how we're getting away from building more data centers, right? We know the right place to put the right assets when they come in, so. My name is John Miller. I'm with IBM in the global technology services line of business. Um, I'm the chief architect for our worldwide deployment of data center infrastructure management tools. And so part of our job is what we call a legacy migration to bridge that into Enlight. So we'll have not 24, but maybe eventually one. But uh, at the same time, it brings a lot of new opportunities that we bring to, to Enlight. But at the same time, um, it's, it's um, going to help us with the end-to-end -end scope of, of DSM. So my job is the strategy and architecture, deployment, operations, and we have a small COC team that we, uh, we use to deploy that uh, across the, our, our enterprise, where we have uh, about two million square feet of data center space and uh, in the neighborhood of uh, 280,000 assets that, that we're, we're running there. And for the rest of the world, usually go you know, two times five and 2.5 times that, and that's, that's what it'll equate to. Yeah, we're looking very strongly at NEO because we, that, that, when I talk about res resiliency being our number one thing in IBM, um, we, we've actually had developed some other reports and things that we use internally to use the data that in like, you know, from the connectivity data and you know, make sure we have the resiliency. But we clearly identify the reporting capability that um, the field acquisition uh, for a NEO brings to the table and that's one we're, we're looking to deploy in first quarter next year.